Hi, I am Dr. Tapasri Roy Sarkar. I am a faculty in the Department of Biology at Texas a and University. Thank you so much for giving me a chance today to talk about my paper that recently published at uh, OncoTarget. The title of the paper is uh, Carcinoma Cells That Have Undergone an e Epithelial to Mesenchymal Transition Differentiate into Endothelial Cells and Contribute to Tumor Growth. So first I would like to say thank you to all my authors. We have graduate students, undergraduate students, postdoctoral scientists and the faculties from Texas a &M University, the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center and also from Hamamatsu University School of Medicine in Japan. So uh, they work really hard to publish this paper. Now let me begin with uh, the history of the research that leading up to this paper. So we know that angiogenesis is a normal physiological process that you know, entails the development of new blood vessels through remodeling of a pre-existing vasculature that underpin by uh, endothelial cells, sprouting, proliferation, and fusion. The ability of solid tumor to induce and sustain angiogenesis is uh, it's termed as neoangiogenesis, especially in the cancer context. And it has been recognized as one of the distinguishing hallmarks of cancer. Accordingly, the induction of this angiogenesis that helps the tumor growth beyond a certain critical size. That means when the pre-existing tissues vasculature becomes inadequate to support the ever-increasing growth of this tumor demands, then this angiogenesis happens. In addition to ensuring the availability of uh, essential nutrients and oxygen, the establishment of new blood vessels also facilitates the removal of cytotoxic metabolic byproducts and carbon dioxide. And crucially, the most important thing, this angiogenesis process also helps the shed tumor cells to disseminate they, tra they, they travel through those blood vessels, go to distant location, and they form secondary tumor or metastasis. Now, as the rap rapidly developing tumors, they outgrow their blood supply, they begin to exhibit areas of localized oxygen deprivation. And this is known as hypoxia. This hypoxia, initially, it induces EMT, which is known as epithelial to mesenchymal transition, that allows the cells to you know, change their properties from epithelial and become more invasive and aggressive mesenchymal like cells and also this you know this hypoxia in turn it tilts uh, the balance towards the pro angiogenic factor and then activating the angiogenic switch and it's helping in this tumor or hypoxia induced new angiogenesis process. Now at the molecular level, an important nexus in tumor progression is the activation of this angiogenic switch that governed by the balance between multitude of pro and anti-angiogenic factor that regulate the endothelial cell proliferation and migration. So there are different ways this new angiogenesis can happen. I'm going to talk about four most important ones. So the dominance of pro-angiogenic factor that promotes the growth of new blood vessels from the pre-existing ves vessels to the so-called sprouting angiogenesis process. In addition to that, there is another process where the bone marrow derived signals or endothelial progenitor cells that can be mobilized or to initiate the de novo vessel formation in response to angiogenic signal and that is known as vasculogenesis. However, there are some tumors, they can be a vascular tumor. They can nevertheless grow, at least initially, and without evoking any angiogenic response through the process of that is known as vessel co-option. And what happened during that time is this in this non-angiogenic mode, which mostly prevails in highly vascularized host tissues, the tumor cells, they hijack the host vasculature and they migrate along with the pre-existing blood vessels, thus invading the surrounding tissues. And the fourth option, which is known as vascular mimicry, that entails the de novo generation of microvessels and that lined with very highly aggressive tumor cells embedded in a rich extracellular matrix, and they are mimicking the true vascular endothelium-like structure, but they are lacking the endothelial cell marker such as CD31 or CD34. Therefore, the complex mechanism underlying this new angiogenesis differ from this physiological angiogenesis and lead to the formation of dysfunctional and disorganized blood vessels with a defective endothelial layer. Nevertheless, that fuels tumor progression and helping the tumor to grow. So 
As I just mentioned that in addition to this angiogenesis, hypoxia is also inducing epithelial to mesenchymal transition. Epithelial to mesenchymal transition is an latent embryonic program that is misappropriated during this carcinoma progression. And it is a complex series of cellular reprogramming event that facilitates the conversion of immotile uh, polarized epithelial cells uh, into more intrinsically migratory, invasive, and aggressive mesenchymal counterparts. We previously identified that one transcription factor for FOXY2. During my postdoctoral study at MD Anderson, I work on with this FOXY2 transcriptional factor. And it is a key downstream effector of several converging EMT pathways. It functions to confer the mesenchymal and stem cell traits, underpinning the metastatic competence. And also interestingly, FOXY2 is also has been linked to angiogenesis, both in the context of normal development and tumor progression. It has the ability to transcriptionally regulate different pro-angiogenic factors such as vascular endothelial growth factor, platelet-derived growth factor, angiopoietin 2. So we also reported that the epithelial cells that induced to undergo EMT they exhibit multi-lineage differentiation potential, similar to mesenchymal stem cells. So they display the ability to differentiate into major mesodermal lineages such as osteoblast, adipocyte, and chondrocyte. So given those all facts together, we then decided to see or we sought to ascertain whether the cells that have that undergone EMT in the hypoxic milieu can accurate these endothelial cell attributes and therefore augments tumor growth by directly contributing to the tumor vasculature. As I just mentioned, all those different you know, procedure of endothelial angiogenesis process, uh, as we know that also they are trying to mobilize the endothelial progenitor cells are coming from the blood vessels. Here we are trying to say that one, the cancer cells which are induced this EMT procedure. Okay. So in this study, what we are trying to say that uh, the cancer cells that undergone EMT, they can transdifferentiate into endothelial cells and they can form the blood vessels helping in this angiogenesis process. So they are not depending on the endothelial progenitor cells that they, that can come from outside and form the blood vessels. So they are they can be independent. They can make their own blood vessels. So there are these are the our study showed the direct evidence that the tumors they can be independent. Next, I'm going to talk about the most notable part of my work. So we have done a lot of in vitro studies as well as in vivo studies. So in vitro studies, we have used triple negative breast cancer cell lines, which has EMT induced cell lines. We have used epithelial cells, which we use as a control. And we have also HMLE snail, HMLE twist cell lines, which are also EMT induced cell lines. So for in vitro studies, we try to culture those cells in the endothelial media. And we try to see that one, whether this incubation with the endothelial media, they are differentiating, trans differentiating into endothelial cells and showing endothelial cell like property. For example, we try to see the expression pattern of CD31, which is a very commonly known endothelial marker. And yes, we observed that those EMT induced cells, when we you know incubated them with the endothelial media, they were expressing high CD31. We have performed the tube formation or capillary-like structure, which is also a characteristic of endothelial cells. Indeed, we have seen that you know the formation of tube-like structure increased uh, when we incubated those cells, cultured those cells with endothelial media. We have also performed LDL uptake assay. We try to see the internalization of LDL or low-density lipoprotein, the major carrier of uh, cholesterol in the blood through the receptor-mediated endocytosis. And we observed that uh, these you know, endothelial media cultured mesenchymal cells, they exhibited significant uptake of those fluorescently tagged LDL. So that is showing that altogether that uh, yes, when we are uh, discultured those in EMT-induced cells with the endothelial media, they are trans-differentiating into endothelial cells. Next, we have performed in vivo studies and we have done two different types of tumor models. The first tumor models, we used MCF7 cells, and we are growing the tumor of different size. 
And at the beginning, as I said that, when the tumor is gradually growing at the core, there should be hypoxia. And we try to see that one, how during that hypoxia, the HIF-1 alpha expression and the HIF-1 alpha expression or hypoxia induces EMT. So the expression of EMT markers along with FOXY2 expression increase during that time. And once there is EMT happens, then that helps the transdifferentiation process. So we showed that this new angiogenesis at the core region of this, you know, outgoing tumors uh, is enacted predominantly through this MCS7 cell transdifferentiation towards an endothelial phenotype. And we show that how these EMT cells is transdifferentiating into endothelial cells. In our second mouse model, what we did is uh, we used MCF7 with uh, HMLE snail or HMLE twist cells, and also we had a control cell. So what we did is we also tried to develop the tumor, and we showed that this study reinforced the assertion that the capacity to potentiate that endothelial transdifferentiation is predominantly associated with the mesenchymal phenotype of the cell's input in this model. So both those models, it helped us to understand that how this EMT is uh, helping the transdifferentiation process. Uh, EMT-induced cells is transdifferentiating into endothelial cells for the new angiogenesis process. When we try to see the molecular mechanism and we observe that the FOXY2, as I mentioned, that which is one of the most important factor for the EMT uh, process, and this FOXY2 is playing a central role in regulating the endothelial transdifferentiation of cells that have undergone EMT. We did in vitro studies and also in vivo studies with uh, control and FOXY2 silent cell lines, and we have this uh, beautiful experiments which showed that clearly that it is playing a very important role for regulating this endothelial transdifferentiation. So all together in this present study, we demonstrated that the cells that have undergone EMT can uh, promote tumor growth and neovascularization and through this acquisition of endothelial-like phenotype with the central EMT mediator FOXY2 that is playing a key role in this process. So our this finding is basically linked the stemness conferred through EMT to the acquisition of endothelial cell traits and the augmentation of tumor angiogenesis in a FOXY2 dependent manner. So now what currently we are doing and what is our future plan is, as I said that we started doing the molecular mechanism, we showed that the role of FOXY2, but we want to study more. We want to know details about what is going on, how this EMT is you know, helping this transdifferentiation process. So we try to find out the role of different factors, for example, how for a HIF-1 alpha and FOXY2, whether they're interacting directly, what is the role of, we have, we observed our preliminary study showed the role of GR1 MDS SC, that is myeloid derived suppressor cells are also playing some role and VEGFR2 or KDR, um, they are also having some role. So we are trying to find out the, uh, in the interaction between them and their role in this EMT-mediated uh, transdifferentiation, endothelial transdifferentiation process. We are also doing RNA-seq uh, using uh, in vitro as well as in vivo tumor models. And uh, one particular signaling pathway we are looking also is EAP, a TAS signaling pathway. We're trying to see that one whether it has any role in this EMT mediated transdifferentiation. And at, at the beginning, when I said that there is another one very interesting way to have this you know new angiogenesis process or these blood vessels in the tumor, which is known as vascular mimicry, where these aggressive breast cancer cell lines, you can see that uh, they are forming this blood vessel-like structure, which doesn't have endothelial-like characteristics, or they don't express CD31 or CD34. But I want to see that one of the EMT is playing any role in this vasculogenic mimicry. How is there is any connection between this EMT and uh, endothelial or this vascular mimicry process? So we are currently doing that one as well. And so at the end of what I want to say that I want to thank so many people, um, the authors, all the researchers, they worked really hard. And we have done this beautiful study where uh, first time we are showing direct evidence that cancer cells, when they're in the inside the tumor when the tumor cells are growing at the core of the tumor 
they are experiencing hypoxia and once the hypoxia is there these cells uh, the hy hypoxia induces emt and this emt cells they can transdifferentiate directly into endothelial cells and they can form their blood vessels they are making the tumors independent they don't need any endothelial cells or periendothelial cells from outside to make blood vessels they can make their own blood vessels uh, making the tumor more independent. So I am really happy about this study and the outcome of this study. I think it's an amazing study and I want to thank many people, all the uh, researchers here who helped uh, doing all those amazing experiments. I want to thank Dr. Sendurai Mani, who was in MD Anderson Cancer Center, was my previous postdoctoral mentor. He helped a lot with many reagents and also with many amazing suggestions. I also want to thank uh, my department, Department of Biology, Texas A&M University for all the other helps they have provided me to uh, finish up this, this, that paper. So thank you so much again, Onco Target, for giving me a chance to talk about my research, to explain what we did. Um, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.